Hey guys, I'm Chris from LifeScore and today we're focusing on one single question. How fast was that pit? So, a radar gun is probably one of the coolest things you can have in your baseball stream. But most of the time, either your application doesn't support it, or you will need to do custom development, which is not always the easiest way. So thanks to LiveScore, we did it for you. Besides the option to manually input speed data, there is an official support for Stalker Pro products. So the company Stalker Pro offers a wide variety of high quality radar guns that allow us to read all kinds of data that we need for our scoreboards. So what do you need? You need a capable Stalker Pro product with a serial data output. So I have the Stalker Pro 2 speed sensor, which is a really highly accurate Doppler radar gun. But Stalker Pro does also offer other products, also cheaper products. But you know what? I don't want to talk that much. So let's continue with our basic setup. We head over to a backstop. Come on with me. All right, so where to position our device? The recommendation is to have it in a line of the pitcher and catcher. So behind the catcher would be perfect, but obviously not doable. So you can of course vary in the height and also in positioning left or right. And to get the best results, depending on the horizontal or vertical angle you choose, you might want to adjust the cosine angle later on in the device configuration. So that is the basic positioning. And it's really important that you do it as good as possible. And the guys from Stalker Pro, they have way more instructions on how to do that. So for today, we keep it simple and we just mount our device on that pole. Okay, that was easy. All right, so we are now directly behind our radar gun setup. So the device is already plugged in and our connection to a laptop is done using an RS-232 to USB converter. So, depending on the type of device you have and the distance of your cable, you might or have to go either with RS-232 or RS-485. So, what's the difference? The difference is RS-232 allows you to stream data at all time, which is really highly accurate, but it only allows a shorter distance of your cable. RS-485 allows you to have a longer distance cable, but LifeScore needs to always ask the device for new speed data, which is called polling. And that's obviously not as highly accurate as streaming would be, but still very good if you have an interval for, let's say, a second or two. All right, so let's take a look at LiveScore and the OpenMouse Stalker Pro setup dialog. We start by connecting to our device. Make sure you have the correct COM port along with the baud rate of your device. So this is usually 9600 for mine. In the connection mode area, make sure you have the matching mode. So whether you're using a streaming protocol with RS-232 or one with the polling formats RS-485. Remember, your device needs to be configured like this. If you use polling, you can also configure the interval LiveScore asks your device for new data. Keep the number low for faster detection. If everything works as expected, you should now see a whole load of configuration settings when clicking on Connect. So these are all those different things you can modify for your Stalker Pro device. Every line contains a good description along with the current device configuration. If you want to change anything, enter it in the corresponding column and click on update device. So I think everyone out there has some special best practice configuration. For me, the easiest one is to use a compact message format A with a message period of zero and an auto clear of one. So the auto clear defines the time the speed reading is held after the target is lost. The smaller this number is, the faster the peak detection of life score. Next thing is the minimum threshold. It's used to ignore all speed data that might just not be a pitch. So set any number you think is high enough to still get the slowest pitch of the game and you're good to go. Besides the hardware-based minimum and maximum threshold, LiveScore also offers an application one, so you don't have to change your device hardware configuration all the time. In addition to this, you can also adjust the target direction to only listen for balls thrown towards the catcher. 
All right, so some last settings to make sure. We have baseball as target type. And also set our transmitter to use transmit. Maybe still adjust the cosine angles. And let's set our unit to miles per hour. Lapsco will use that setting when displaying speed. So all this, including recommendations, can be found on the Lapsco website. For an easy setup, there is also monitoring output. So one can throw a ball while you configure everything. And you always see what happens. All right, so, so many things. I would just say, let's start our game. We've added our external display and put some players on the field. So like with every other live school game, we first have to prepare our game, add a new layout and open our sports control panel. If you use the automatic Stalker Pro speed detection, it's always hard to differ between a real pitch and a simple throw to the catcher, even though with a good minimum threshold. And if you wanna display a pitch speed in your scoreboard, it should be secure. And that is why you need to arm the speed detection. But once this is done and live score detects a pitch with a speed above your minimum threshold, it will be automatically displayed. And of course, with a duration, you can modify on your own. So let's give it a try. Good guys, let's see how your game could look like with Stalker Pro and Live Score. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you have fun using LiveScore with your Stalker Pro products. Thanks for watching. See you next time.